As I've discussed in many different videos, language, ethnicity, culture, and genetics are all very closely intertwined, and historically it was quite rare for different tribes, people groups, and nations to adopt another tongue without serious conflict, subjugation, or intermixing, and hence people who share the same language family usually also share a certain degree of kinship or heritage with each other as well. However, when looking at the language family that the Vietnamese and Cambodians belong to, it's a rather interesting situation as this greater family is seemingly scattered throughout Asia without rhyme or reason, with small pockets in Malaysia, India, Burma, and elsewhere, and these people groups, despite all speaking languages that descend from a common source, come in a large variety of appearances and belong to many different cultures and religions. So why is that? What is the origin of the Vietnamese, Cambodians, and other related people groups of the Austro-Asiatic branch, and how did they get to where they are today, and how were they impacted by surrounding nations and influenced them as well? Believe it or not, the Vietnam you know today is actually a rather young country, and I'm not just talking about because of the Vietnam War. Arguably, the first people to have inhabited what is now Vietnam, Cambodia, the rest of Southeast Asia, South Asia, and possibly even Southern China, were a very squat, dark-skinned group of people who have almost no resemblance to the people we'd recognize there today, being more closely related to the indigenous people of Papua New Guinea or Australia. Thousands of years before we saw these relatively modern Austroasiatic peoples emerge, the collection of peoples that inhabited Southeast Asia is known as the Hoa Binhian culture, which isn't actually what they called themselves, of course, and they most certainly were not a single grouping of people, but rather a variety of different archaeological discoveries that have similar traits and can plausibly be linked to each other. It's known that the Hoa Binhian culture spanned from northern Vietnam to southern Thailand, but other related finds have been discovered in southeast and southwest China, eastern India, Nepal, maritime Southeast Asia, and possibly even Australia, seemingly confirming the connection between the indigenous people of Oceania, South Asia, and Southeast Asia from tens of thousands of years ago. The Proto-Austroasiatics originated in southern China alongside the Proto-Austronesians and Proto-Thai and were part of some of the first migrations of East Asians into Southeast Asia, which would radically alter this landscape forever. The Proto-Austroasiatic people, who at the time were predominantly rice farmers, gradually swept through mainland Southeast Asia, including what is now Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Myanmar, and Peninsular Malaysia, either intermixing with or displacing the Hoa Binhian culture, and even spread to the western half of the Malay archipelago, such as Sumatra, Java, and possibly Borneo as well, meaning that at one point, all of this region was Austroasiatic speaking. However, some groups retain more of the original Hoa Binhian DNA of Southern Eurasian rather than Eastern Eurasian origin, which we'll get to later. These peoples on the mainland of Southeast Asia would really develop into three major peoples surrounded by many much smaller nation states, and these include the many Mon kingdoms in the west and what is now modern day Burma or Myanmar, the Khmer Empire which was mostly centered around modern Thailand, and you also have the Dai Viet in the east near China. The Mon and Khmer civilizations would actually become very deeply entrenched in South Asian culture from both Indo-Aryan and Dravidian waves of influence in a process known as Indianization, with both nations essentially adopting both Hinduism and Buddhism before eventually switching over to Buddhism entirely. There was a large degree of trade and settlement from South Asia to these regions during this time, and even the scripts used for writing Khmer and Mon are both derived from the Brahmic scripts of ancient India. Dai Viet, or Vietnam on the other hand, was quite a different situation, as not only did they not have much contact with the South Asian realm, they had a much larger degree of influence from China, and were actually incorporated into China for many centuries, and it wasn't until the 10th century AD that they gained complete independence. But keep in mind, at this time, Vietnam was only a fraction of what we see today, largely confined to the north. To the south of the Vietnamese were actually an Austronesian people who had migrated from the Malay archipelago known as the Cham, who predominantly adhered to Hinduism with a Muslim minority, and over the course of many hundreds of years, the Kingdom of Vietnam would push to the south, conquering territory from the Kingdom of Champa on the coastline and pushing them further into the interiors. By 1700, virtually the entirety of the Cham territory had been annexed, and in the coming century, Vietnam would push even further south, 
even taking much of the territory from the Khmer Empire as well, with ethnic Vietnamese or Kin settlers moving into these regions and intermixing with the local populations to varying degrees. Things were not so great for the Mon and Khmer, however, as the southern expansion of Thai and Tibeto-Burman peoples from China would cut into their kingdoms, greatly reducing their territory. The Khmer Empire would lose huge amounts of territory to Thailand and Vietnam and would become the Kingdom of Kampuchea, better known today as Cambodia, while the Mon were absorbed under the Kingdom of Burma. However, it's important to note that there was an extensive intermixing process with the Austroasiatic inhabitants when the Thai and Burmese moved south. The Mon, Khmer, and other Austroasiatic groups such as the Hua or Palang are prominent and important ethnic minorities in Thailand and Myanmar today, and even the royal family of Thailand has a large degree of Mon ancestry. As for the genetics of these groups, although there's a large degree of shared DNA among them, there are still major differences. Ethnic kin from Vietnam have a particularly high degree of East Asian DNA from millennia of intermixing with the Han Chinese to the north, while the Khmer from Cambodia and Mon from Burma have a large degree of South Asian DNA. The Vietnamese are still the most relatively homogenous ethnic group out of the Austroasiatics, genetically speaking, but there are some differences between North and South, as South Vietnamese not only have less Han admixture, but also have more admixture from maritime Southeast Asia, mostly from mixing with the Cham, and a very small amount of Southern Eurasia or Hoa Binh Hien DNA, mostly from admixture with Cambodians. It is interesting that despite their proximity and shared ethnolinguistic heritage, the Vietnamese and Cambodians have such marked differences in their genetics and appearances to a certain degree, but keep in mind this is over thousands of years of genetic drift and admixture from separate sources. The Mon and Khmer are still very closely related genetically, despite being separated by the entire country of Thailand, and these two groups carry far more ancient Australoid DNA than Vietnamese, especially in the maternal lineages. But let's move on to some of these smaller groups related to the Kin or Khmer that you've probably never heard of, and trust me, there's a lot of them, but I'm not just referring to groups in Vietnam who speak Austroasiatic languages separate from Vietnamese or Cambodian. This is due to ancient migration of Austroasiatics from their homeland many thousands of years ago to other parts of Asia, in particular other parts of Southeast Asia and the northeastern section of the Indian subcontinent. As mentioned previously, Austroasiatic speakers also migrated much further south than the modern countries of Cambodia and Vietnam, even making it to Indonesia. But just who were they exactly? Well, we have a pretty good idea of what kind of languages they spoke since they're actually still around in the heart of Malaysia a people group known as the Orang Asli, but these tribes are definitely more distinct appearance-wise than other Southeast Asians, even being darker than Cambodians. They have a much higher degree of the Australo-Melanesian or Negrito genetic strain than other Austroasiatics, but they just so happened to adopt these Austroasiatic languages thousands of years ago. The Nicobarese are an example of what these Austroasiatic people from Indonesia may have been like, seeing as to how they settled on the island of Nicobar just north of Sumatra in Indonesia, but remained relatively untouched by the outside world after they settled the island. Most of the Austroasiatic peoples of Malaysia and Western Indonesia were eventually assimilated by incoming Austronesian migrants coming from Taiwan and the Philippines, but they did retain most of their regional genetic components, which is why some Malaysians or Indonesians in the West may actually be more closely related genetically to Cambodians or those from the mainland rather than Filipinos or other islanders. Many Aslians actually genetically cluster much more closely with the Negritos of the Philippines, such as the Aita, or the Andamanese of the neighboring Andaman Islands and the Bay of Bengal, but linguists still have no idea what their original language may have been, since it seemed to have been lost long ago when they took on the languages of Austroasiatic and later Austronesian migrants. The last group of Austroasiatic people actually lives in South Asia, known as the Munda or Kolarians, and once more, by simply looking at them, it'd be hard to guess that they have anything in common with the Vietnamese or Cambodians whatsoever, as similar to the Aslians, they have very dark skin and more Australoid or Vedoid features rather than Eastern Eurasian. This group is actually the result of Austroasiatic migrants from Burma arriving in Bangladesh and Northeast India around 4,000 years ago likely by sea rather than land, and we can tell by their paternal haplogroups, which are mostly Eastern Eurasian in origin, that the Austroasiatic men intermixed with indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherer females. 
However, these Munda groups such as the Ho, Santali, and Karya have very little Western Eurasian DNA when compared to the neighboring Indo-Aryans or even Dravidians, which shows that the original South Asians that they intermixed with were a very isolated population that had not yet intermixed with migrants from the West. Mundari are around 15 to 30 percent Eastern Eurasian in origin, although the Kasi in Northeast India are closer to 60 or 70 percent, while the Aslians are in the ballpark of 40 to 60 percent, largely depending on the individual or which tribe you're looking at. It is rather strange to think that these more oceanic looking, Austroasiatic speaking aboriginals still inhabit parts of Thailand and Malaysia although they only number less than 1,000 in southern Thailand and less than 100,000 in peninsular Malaysia. The Vietnamese, of course, number around 80 million, while Cambodians are closer to 15 million, although this number increases drastically when you include the number of Khmer who have assimilated into Thai or Vietnamese society, the latter being known as the Khmer Krom, and in India, Austroasiatic speakers number around 16 to 17 million. So it's rather interesting how this collection of people you wouldn't think has much in common, such as the Vietnamese, tribal people from Malaysia and India, Cambodians, and others have such an intertwined and ancient history tied to both India, China, and Oceania. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the unique Austroasiatic people and which of these you'd like to learn more about. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.